Hey everybody, my name is Daniel Zilasko and I shortly want to introduce myself. I just finished my PhD with the topic Desk VR Seamless Integration of Virtual Reality into Desk Based Data Analysis Workflows. I did this work at RWTH Aachen University and I just recently moved over to the University of Trier. During my thesis I started concentrating on office working environments. Thus, one part of my work deals with the desk itself how it integrates and how it is perceived in VR, how it can be utilized, for instance, by introducing passive haptic menus, as you can see here. A second part concentrates on the fact that the user is usually seated in these scenarios and how virtual travel can be realized. So my newest work will be presented uh, at this VR, especially tackling the question how important it is to have the ability of freely looking around while using embodied interfaces. Also important, especially in professional use cases, is cyber sickness. I have and had also a look on how to tackle this, for instance, by manipulating the user's field of view with respect to his well-being. Next to desk VR and seated VR, I also always have been interested in innovative and convincing 3D user interfaces. As an example, may serve blow click, a non-verbal vocal input that can be used as a hands-free trigger method. Another more crafting-centered project I'm working in at the moment with the team uh, is dealing with a convincing metaphor to travel in ancient Roman city. Last but not least, I also have a dark side. Thus, I worked also on methods to efficiently calculate 3D bundles in the domain of graph visualization. So that was me, let's talk about something else. Bernard Rieke and I ask the questions, can we give seated users in virtual reality the sensation of standing or even walking and do we want to? We are concentrating on ground-based scenarios. Imagine a seated user that is standing or walking in VR. Does, does this postural mismatch has an impact or even the potential to destroy the illusion? Actually, that situation is nothing new. We are doing it for a long time already. And first-person video games add usually some cues to help the user accepting this mismatch. They usually use head bobbing, adjust the height of the virtual camera, play walking sounds and adapt the movement speed. There are more advanced methods that the most of do not only work in VR and most of them are at least partially researched as you can read here. Thus, we already seem to be able to answer the initial question with a yes. We can give seated users the sensation of walking or at least explain the mismatch and the phenomena that seems to help us here is the willing suspension of disbelief. That is, the user is usually willing to ignore mismatches and errors to en enhance his own experience. However, there are still open questions we want to point at. Both Walking and hovering sufficiently explain the situation, but does it make a difference if we support either one or the other sensation? Second, can we create an illusion that holds even when the user stops helping us, stops willing? Think of the matrix. A follow-up question to our initial one is the question for the why. Why would we want to trick the user? So one thing we just learned is that the users will create their own mental model to explain the mismatch anyways. And one reason to guide them might be that we want to keep the experiences consistent. But are there other reasons? Are there any advantages of real walking transferring to virtual walking? Advantages like enhanced spatial orientation or distance estimation? In part, this seems to be the case, but more research is needed. At the end, we ask if there are alternative ways to create a reasonable and closed experience for the user. And there are. The user could ride a scooter or golf cart, thus the mismatch gets smaller. What are the advantages? Are there any disadvantages? If you have answers, want to discuss or have an opinion, contact us.